Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, this is going to be the very first garden and greenhouse tour of 2024. It's actually kind of a mixed bag. We are excited to show you what's going on. Uh, there are some really great things going on. Right. But there are some bad things. I don't want to say bad things. There are some things that are not going as great, but that have solutions. Uh, but we're excited to show you guys because, you know, we want to be real around here. We don't want everything to be uh, staged and fake. We want everything to be real. And we've uh, dedicated ourselves to bring you kind of the good and the bad throughout this homesteading adventure we're on. Right. So today we're going to go kind of, you know, planter by planter through the garden and through the greenhouse. We're going to show you the good, the bad, the ungerminated in some cases <laughs> and we're going to talk to you about some of the solutions that we think we have for what's going on now again there's a lot of good going on so we don't want this to be a negative video uh, the nice thing is also that here in Missouri we have a super long growing season so there's some things that even if we still had to start over right now it's the end of May we'd have plenty of time to start yes. over and still have a great season here in the garden so Without further ado, let's go in the garden and get started on the first tour of 2024. Now, before we get started just going bed by bed, we wanna just explain really quickly that we feel that we have two overarching issues here in this area. And we wanna talk about that before we get going so we don't have to just kinda of like repeat ourselves all the time. Right, because a lot of this is happening in every bed right. or kind of most every bed. So instead of having to bring the same thing up over and over, we're just going to talk to you about it now. So overall, there are two things kind of happening with the plants here. Uh, number one, we don't think that they're as green overall as they should be. Right. And number two, we don't think that they're growing as quickly as they should be. Correct. Now, we we, we have some suspicions as to what's causing that. Uh, I don't think for a second it has anything to do with the raised beds. These, oh, no. These Vajaga raised beds that we are growing in honestly are are amazing right. we absolutely love them uh, and the watering system that we installed is doing a great job so we don't think it's a water issue and we know for sure it's not a raised bed issue because really how could the raised beds cause that issue so what our suspicion is is that uh, we haven't done a whole lot of fertilizing yet because we were assuming that this organic compost that we bought was going to be super high in nutrients and that we wouldn't need to do a lot of fertilizing. So that's one possible cause. The other issue we think could be happening is a pH issue. Correct. So we think that if we can figure out whether one or both of those things are an issue, we'll be able to know how, we'll be able to figure out how to fix that and then everything the rest of the growing season is going to go really well. So we actually have a soil test kit that is supposed to be delivered today. We were hoping that it might be here before we did this video, but it didn't get here yet. But as soon as that gets here, we'll be able to test the NPK of the soil. We'll also be able to test the pH of the soil. And that should help us figure out what's going on and how to rectify it. So as we go throughout the garden, that was, those are kind of the things that we think are happening. And so we don't need to tell you on every bed that we think that's happening. All right, let's start the tour and let's move into the garden. Okay, let's start off with the onions. We have two beds of onions here. They are the variety candy onions and we got them as just like little onion starts. And all the onions are alive. Uh, they have not died or anything. Uh, you can see the second bed over here. It's doing pretty well. Um, overall, we think that uh, they aren't quite as green as they, we would want them to be, and they aren't growing as quickly, like we said when we started the tour. But I think that rectifying those issues will really boost them up. I do want to mention that I had kind of a bare area over here where we kind of ran out of um, onion starts. So I planted uh, three calendula plants. Uh, this year I noticed that at Stark Brothers they were offering some herbs and some flowers. So I did order some of those. So throughout the garden you'll see some of them and calendula was one of them. I love calendula because they're a bright, uh, fun, cheery, 
flower, but they're also uh, medicinal and they're very good for the skin. So I planted these three here and they're doing actually really well. Now down here in these two raised beds, remember we said that we were going to be starting peanuts for the very first time. We've never grown peanuts. It's just an experiment. And it looks like every single peanut that I planted with the exception of two, I don't think this one germinated and I don't think this one germinated, but you guys, they're doing really well. Uh, and that is really exciting. I also came back and planted some marigold seeds uh, and some of them have just started to germinate and I'm just waiting for them to take off. So this should be very beautiful uh, once everything is big and all the flowers are blooming. So we're really excited for the peanuts. Back here, I had planted or we had planted some dill seeds. Now, almost every one of them germinated, but they really didn't do much. Uh, there are a couple here still that are super teeny tiny. These guys should be a lot bigger right now uh, than, than they are. Uh, we are going to keep it going. We might replant some to see if we can get a better crop, but we're really hoping that the soil test will tell us what's going on and we can rectify it and get some dill growing here for our dill pickles. And then back here are two separate beds of okra. And I also planted some uh, basil in here. So they have all germinated but they're not doing a whole lot. We're hoping they're gonna get bigger once we figure out what's going on. And we're hoping really that once the heat of the summer comes, these okra plants will just explode. That's actually the experience we've had in the past. Okra like hot weather and they get really big once the heat sets in. All right, the next row here in the garden is our row of squash. They are doing pretty good overall. Uh, again, they're not growing quite as quickly as we'd hoped. And on the squash, and along with some of the other plants, there's something that's a little bewildering to me that I wanna show you guys. And that is that in the same bed, from the same package of seeds, some are doing really well. Like, look at this one. Look how fast this has grown. This is the, like, flat, the patty pan squash. Um, this one is growing really nice. It's you know, actually pretty darn green. And then right next to it, from the same seed, package is another one that is growing really slow is kind of yellow and then another one that's just kind of somewhere in between so i don't really know what's going on with that i do hope that our soil test will give us a real idea of what's going on but these are the patty pan squash you can see they all germinated again because we have such a long growing season i'm not too worried about them at this point we have plenty of time to fix whatever's going on and then you can see also that Sarah has some flowers planted in here, some marigolds, some snapdragons, uh, and those are just gonna be beneficial. They're gonna uh, help some of the beneficial insects come, and they're just gonna give some color here to the garden. The next bed here is our lemon squash. Uh, they have germinated, but again, they are also pretty slow going at this point. Uh, I'm not really sure what else to say about that. They're up, they're growing, but they're just growing slowly. And then you can see more flowers in here. She's got some nasturtium down there on the end. And then I think these are more snapdragons here. And then our final bed here is zucchini. Again, growing slowly, a little bit on the yellow side. We're gonna get that all figured out, but at least they are up and they are growing. Okay, this row is uh, primarily pole beans. Uh, we've got some, uh, some cinnamon basil that I planted, some snapdragons and alyssum that I planted just to bring some color, also some marigolds. Out of all of the plants in the garden, I think what is struggling the most are the bean plants. Um, and, and some things are just kind of bewildering, like Kevin had said. Uh, these beans here, are they're growing pretty nicely. They're mostly dark green. Um, you can see on some of these leaves that we had some hail damage with one of the storms. So all of these leaves that have uh, this damage is from hail. But in this same bed, we also have bean plants that are just really struggling. These are barely growing. They're really yellow. Uh, and, and so it's really just kind of a mystery. So we really are excited to get going on the soil test and see what's going on. Um, some of the basil, the cinnamon basil, I mean, they're doing okay, but they're not doing great. And really that is consistent with all three of these beds. Uh, the beans are just, they're just yellow and they're just struggling. They're kind of stunted and not really growing very quickly. Um, I do have 
a rosemary plant here from Stark Brothers that I planted. This also should be really dark green, um, almost purpley green, and it's just kind of yellow. Now in some instances, when you have plants that are yellowing like this, uh, it could be from overwatering or too much water. You guys, there's absolutely no way that these beds are being uh, overwatered. First of all, they have amazing drainage. Underneath here is completely open with the exception of this woven weed fabric. And you guys, this weed fabric lets water through really great. And raised beds in general have fantastic drainage. Uh, so there's, there's no possibility that they're being overwatered. And we are only watering these every other day. Um, and when it rains, we don't water them. So it cannot be an issue of overwatering. But the beans, like I said, are struggling the most out of everything in these raised beds. The next row, which is the other side of our trellis here, our arch, is mostly tomatoes and cucumbers. Uh, these are the spoon tomatoes right here. You can see that they are, they're, they're doing okay, but again, they're not growing nearly as quickly as I would think that they should be, but they are doing okay and they are starting to get a few blossoms. And then on the two ends of the raised bed here, we have what are called geranium kiss, which are like a bush tomato. Um, they're doing okay. The color isn't too bad on those. This one's doing much better than this one here. Uh, again, that's kind of a mystery as to why plants within the same bed are doing so differently, but uh, we'll get that figured out. Next up here is our um, cucumbers, and they are only doing okay. We actually had only two of the plants uh, germinate here of the bait alpha cucumbers. Our market moors, they all germinated, so we are going to replant some of these after we do our soil test. Again, because we have a long growing season, not a big deal here. Uh, and then we have some fennel on the sides, and Sarah planted some more flowers. The last bed here is our Juliet cherry tomatoes. They, again, are doing okay, but not great. Uh, the color isn't too bad on them, but they really aren't growing a whole lot either. So uh, they will, I'm sure, you know, pick up here over time, especially as we start to get some more warm days, and hopefully some of our severe weather is over as well. And then we've got some different types of basil planted in here as well. Again, it's doing okay. It's not as vibrant green as we would like it to be, but it is hanging in there. And then we have two more of the geranium kiss plants here on the sides. Now these next two rows here are primarily asparagus and strawberries. We do have mustard plants um, at the end there. Now these guys, they're doing okay also. We don't have a whole lot of experience growing asparagus or strawberries. I feel like uh, the strawberry should be bigger uh, by now, more full. Their color is okay and they're all alive. Kind of same with the asparagus. The asparagus isn't a bad color. We just don't have a whole lot of growth happening. Um, but I don't know if I should have more on the very first actually month or so of putting the roots in the ground. On the end back here, Kevin's gonna walk backwards, um, are the mustard plants. Now we're growing these mustard plants primarily for their seed because Kevin's really excited to experiment with making homemade mustard. Overall, you guys, they're doing pretty well, except that same mystery that we've been having. The mustard plants on this side are like really big. They're, overall, their color is good, but the mustard plants over here are like super tiny. Now we do have something that's been munching on them, uh, maybe some kind of caterpillar or something, but I really don't think that that is what is attributing to these being so much smaller than this. Um, so that's just something that we're, a mystery we're gonna have to work on solving as well. One thing I haven't talked about this growing season yet is my buckets back here. These are all my herb buckets that used to be on the side of the greenhouse. We put them here to protect them uh, from the chickens and just to keep them kind of in the front of my mind because I have never really had a place to just plant my, um, my herbs like for a permanent place. But Kevin and I have recently ordered more Vajega raised beds. They're the L-shaped corner beds. And so we're gonna have three big corner beds um, 
one on each of these back corners and then one on the front corner. So I'll be able to transplant these mature um, herbs that I've been, these perennials that I've been growing in here. Some of these have been growing in these buckets for like three or four years until I could figure out a permanent home for them. And so I'm very excited that this year, this summer, they are going to have a permanent home. They're going to have permanent raised beds and they're going to be just beautiful. I can harvest them and preserve them and it, I'm really excited about that. So that is something that is coming soon. Uh, but And honestly, they're doing well. Over the winter, the chickens scratched up some of them and some of them um, didn't survive, but it's okay. I've got backups, uh, but most of them are doing really well. So you guys, that is it for the garden area. Again, some good, some bad, but I'm confident that we're gonna be able to fix the problems that we are having. All right, let's walk over to the greenhouse. Got exciting things to show you in there as well. Okay, into the greenhouse. You guys, overall, everything in the greenhouse is doing really well. Yeah. We're having great growth. Uh, overall, the color of all of these plants is really good. Uh, we are struggling, though, with aphids, the, primarily with the tomatoes. Right. We've had quite a few aphids. Um, I've, I've treated four aphids with like a natural um, insecticidal soap spray that I've made here. I've done that a couple of times. We've also ordered ladybugs uh, to be delivered, but you guys, the fastest we could get them is like two weeks, which yeah. when you're having an aphid issue, two weeks is a long, long time, which is why Sarah has used the insecticidal soap as well. The ladybugs are supposed to be here any day now, so hopefully once we get those in here, uh, those will help tremendously with the aphid problem. One thing we were able to get quickly through Amazon are ladybug lures, which is just a little device that has like a pheromone or something in it uh, that you put on your tomato plants and hopefully it draws in more ladybugs. Since we've done that, we have seen more ladybugs, but right. just not quite enough. So all in all, though, the tomatoes are looking good. We're gonna show you the tomatoes here in a little bit. It's just that we are having some aphid issues on them. All right. Let's move on to everything else in the greenhouse. Let's look through the entire greenhouse, you guys, because once again, this greenhouse is doing fantastic. Uh, we contribute a lot of that, I think, to the shade cloth above mm -hmm. the greenhouse. It really keeps off that really hot sun. And you guys, everything is just exploding. Let's go row by row. All right, let's start over on this side of the greenhouse with the tomato plants. Uh, we do have a couple basil plants here at the front. They're doing really well. We've actually already cut basil off of those a couple times to uh, use in cooking and so they're doing really well. The tomato plants over here you can see they are growing really well. Um, again the only issue we're having is with the aphids and I'm sure we'll get that under control. Now the one thing is as many of you know we use the single stem method when we when we grow our tomatoes which means we run a string from the base of the tomato plant up to the top of the greenhouse. Because I've been gone for my dad's open heart surgery, I haven't been here, and Sarah has had to kind of take this all on herself. Well, stringing tomatoes like that is not a one-person job. It's a two-person job. So what she did to kind of get us through is she used these white fiberglass poles that are actually like electric fence poles. Would she use these to just string the tomatoes up temporarily? And now that I'm back home, we're gonna get busy actually stringing these up to the top of the greenhouse. You'll probably see that in an upcoming video. But look at you guys, these tomatoes are doing really well. The color is beautiful. We've got lots of blossoms, lots of little tomatoes on already. Uh, I'm not worried at all about the type of tomato season we're gonna have. I think it's gonna be fantastic. If you see here, this is one of these little red discs. That's what Sarah was talking about with the ladybug lures. That's what they look like. And they do seem like they have helped at least a little bit. Really what I'm hoping is that once our ladybugs arrive that we ordered, these lures will help keep them here instead of, you know, you spend $40 on ladybugs and they all fly away. I'm hoping these ladies will, or these lures will attract them and help them stay here in the greenhouse. So you guys, that's the tomatoes. I'm not gonna go variety by variety right now, but all in all, they are doing really well and it's time to start stringing them up to the top of the greenhouse. Well, this side of the greenhouse uh, has a lot of peppers and I love to grow peppers. 
overall the peppers are doing really well we have lots of different varieties uh, they're growing nice and tall and they are at the point where we need to start supporting them so that they don't tip over in the wind or something like that and the way that we do that is with tomato cages so the day that we come out here and work and uh, string up the tomatoes we'll also put the tomato cages in between each of these uh, plants and kind of attach them just to give them added support now overall their color looks great their size looks great they're all growing in the way each pepper variety is supposed to grow and what's very exciting is that we do already have some peppers on uh, this is an emerald giant uh, bell pepper variety and we've got a nice sized pepper there down here at the uh, hot wax the hungarian hot wax peppers we actually have quite a few peppers and that's really exciting a nice sized one here and a couple small ones here and then over here we've got quite a few and that's really really exciting uh, to have a really great start in uh, homegrown peppers so they're actually doing really well we've got more at the end that we got at the amish uh, nursery and we're just so excited that all the peppers are doing really well all right next up are green beans and here we're growing bush variety of green beans unlike out in the garden where we're growing pole beans that will climb up a trellis we're growing two varieties in here uh, these buckets right here in front of me we have six buckets there's five plants in each bucket uh, these are contender green beans and you guys they are doing fantastic we grow this variety every year because they just always do really well you can see how many blossoms are on these we actually have quite a few little beans on here already um, I've been waiting and waiting to find the first one that's big enough to pick but it hasn't quite gotten there yet but you guys we definitely have some beans that will be ready to pick in the next week or so won't be a meal's worth but it'll be a nice snack while we're working out here so these are the contender green beans and then way down here at the other end on the other side of the tomatoes we have more green beans these are more bush beans this is a variety that you guys uh, suggested for us as well this is called i believe they're jade is what they're called uh, they're doing well also no beans on yet that i've seen but there are starting to get some blossoms so that's exciting and all in all the beans here in the greenhouse are doing phenomenal they're growing super fast and they're just looking really really good in front of me here are six buckets of cucumber plants we planted the wisconsin pickling i think that's what they're called now this is another one of those things that i have needed kevin here to help me because we trellis these kind of on a a mesh trellis and they are really wanting to climb you can see that they're sending out their runners oh there's a ladybug they're sending out their runners so we need to get out here during our greenhouse working day and uh, put up that mesh trellis and help them start climbing straight up now when kevin was looking out here earlier he found a baby cucumber so we are so close to cucumber season oh i see it right here a tiny little cucumber right there so that is fantastic. What that says though also is that the pollinators are finding their way in here. Lots of bees of all varieties and shapes and sizes. We've seen in here uh, pollinating everything that needs to be pollinated. So the cucumbers are looking great. Soon enough, we're gonna have lots of pickling cucumbers and I cannot wait. Next up are more zucchini and yellow crookneck squash. The zucchini are already starting to produce. Now we do have a few aphids over on the zucchini as well. So we're hoping that once we get the ladybugs, they'll take care of the zucchini and the tomatoes. And then we have the yellow crookneck squash here. Uh, they're doing a little bit, they're growing a little bit slower than the zucchini, but zucchini are always super fast. So these are looking good. They're starting to get some fruit on as well. So that is really exciting. It's been a few years since we've grown yellow crookneck squash and I'm excited to have them in the summer. And then finishing out this row are some more pepper plants. Sarah talked about them a little bit a minute ago. These are ones that we bought from our local Amish greenhouse that we go to. Uh, these two here are cayenne peppers. Uh, these are my two buckets of extra spicy peppers this year. So we've got cayenne peppers over here. 
I've got a ghost pepper plant right here and a habanero plant right here. So this is where I'm going to be making most of my hot sauce out of this year. And then back here, these are two, they're called mild jalapenos. They have a tiny bit of spice, but not much at all. They're a good snacking pepper. And that finishes out this row of the greenhouse. So you guys, that is the status of both of our major growing areas this year. Even though we're having some problems, different problems in different places, we are really confident that we're gonna be able to figure those things out. And this year is still going to be an amazing growing season. Right, uh, there's definitely work to be done. Now that I'm back on the homestead full time after my dad's surgery, uh, we can really bust out some work because we've got some gorgeous days coming up. Uh, a few days of rain mixed in here, but it looks like for the most part, we've got some nice days coming up. We're gonna be able to spend some time in here and get all caught up in no time at all. And I'm confident that before too long, you guys will be seeing me eat the first tomato of the season. So you guys, we're so happy that you joined us today to see what's going on in the greenhouse and in the garden to see the good, bad, and kind of some of the ugly. You guys, if you're enjoying videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and remember the best way you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media until next time thank you so much for stopping by our homestead take care and god bless god bless